So hello everyone, uh, I'm Hamid Reza Mustafa and pleasure to have this chance to talk about our work at CNR on developing dynamic flood susceptibility mapping over the Mediterranean area. So uh, I'd like to begin by mentioning that this work is part of the OMC project use case and uh, focusing on the European flood susceptibility map at the high resolution one kilometer. And our ultimate goal is to develop over the entire Europe, um, but we were starting by testing our approach, just our Mediterranean area. And this presentation is focusing on. And also I need to mention that this, the part of this work uh, was presented at the EJU and now we are preparing the um, paper. Okay, so for flood management and mitigation of impact of flood, we need preventive and emergency measure. And there are three types of flood map for these measures, flood susceptibility, flood inundation or extension, and flood hazard. Flood susceptibility is the preventive measure that helps to identify area with a high likelihood of flooding. And this is based on the physical and environmental factors. But flood inundation or extent is uh, an emergency measure determined to observe flood before, during, or after the flood. And the first one, flood hazard, typically look at the expected of extent flood uh, or the depth of flood based on various scenario, for example, 100 return period of the flood. Uh, in this study, we are focusing on flood susceptibility map. Uh, traditionally, this map, flood susceptibility map, is a static. It means that they provide a single snapshot of flood and they fail to consider the dynamic nature of flood susceptibility. And, and these, these uh, factors are influenced by various environmental uh, components like the soil moisture or precipitation. So, to overcome this limitation, our focus is to develop the dynamic flood susceptibility. Okay, so dynamic flood susceptibility requires incorporating the temporal variation of environmental factor that influence flood susceptibility. And to achieve this, we need a high resolution data set that capture this variation. Okay, in our research center, uh, we are developing and producing a different EO-based uh, product for hydrological application like the precipitation, irrigation. And so we use this data set as an input of our model to develop the, the map. And you can find the details of this data set as it's a part of our project in the Professor Luca Broca paper, as I reference it here. Okay, so uh, here is a methodology and the methodology behind developing the philosophy map and we can break it in three steps and each of these steps for each season done for each season separately. So first preparing the data set and for the creating, we need the seasonal flood inventory map and also different factor and that influence of the flood. And this is the input features of the model. Uh, we use the machine learning algorithm because it's, it's like a classification problem. And we use um, four different machine learning algorithms, the random forest, SVM, XGBoots, and the ensemble of the model. Uh, and then we, for evaluated, we use threefold cross-validation for training and evaluating of the performance. And, and then we use the, the shape uh, package to gain the explanability into the model's prediction. And it helped us to understand which factors are most influence, influential into the model uh, classification. So as I said before, we need flood inventory maps when we use two data set. First, the global flood data set, and this is the open access data. 
And this and this is uh, for the flood event after 2018. Uh, and the second one is the Copernicus Emergency Management Service flood data set. Uh, and we combine both data set and separate it for each season. And also we use uh, eight different flood influence factor, like the precipitation, soil moisture, land cover, drainage density, slope, them variations of the per precipitation and DVI uh, for, um, and we use it as an input of our model. And these are the results here, the evolution result of uh, threefold classification in each uh, season. And you can, as you can see, results show that all the four models achieve good performance across all season. And we observe some variation in the best model across different season. For spring and autumn, exhibits shows a strong performance. For summer and winter, the ensemble model emerged at the best effective choice. But uh, you can see that the result uh, of the random forest and exhibits is not so much different, but we, we, we choose the best one for the final product for each season. And uh, here, the output of the explainable AI package for our model. And for the first row, uh, shows the feature importance of the best model in each season. And the, the top is the most important. And you can see the order of the feature. For example, soil moisture appear a critical factor in the spring, but uh, in the spring and winter, but not in the summer. And you can see the dynamic factor rank among three most important factor across uh, all the seasons. So this is underlying the value of incorporating the dynamic flood susceptibility map. I don't want to go through the, the details, but other figures shows that the, the degree of change of features that contribute to flood or non-flood area, and also the interaction of two selected variables. So we can select a variable to, to, to variable and then the, how the interaction in, in a different value. So it's, it's like explaining a black box of the machine learning. And this is the final product. And uh, you can see that the flood susceptibility map our different season for uh, in four susceptibility classes, low to very high. As you can see, the flood susceptibility map for each season are distinctly different, and this highlights the importance of our approach. For example, you can see the difference of the autumn. So some parts are very high, and it's, it's different from the winter, different from the summer and the spring. And if we go to go through the, the more analysis, our entire of Mediterranean area, we can see the, the first plot. Um, you can see that uh, the spring and winter have the higher proportions of the area classified as a moderate, high or very high susceptibility compared to autumn and summer. Uh, but the autumn shows the highest proportion of area classified as a high, a very uh, high uh, susceptibility area. Uh, and the second one in the, ur on the urban area, as you can see that the, um, the autumn emerged at the season with the highest proportions of very high susceptibility uh, zone. Or if you look at our the cropland area, as we expected, winter exhibit the highest proportions of area with the moderate high or very high uh, susceptibility classes. And we choose the cropland area and urban area based on the ISA CCI data set. And this is the summary takeaway, so the key takeaway from our research. First, our seasonal analysis highlight the importance of considering seasonal factor. Uh, the second one, for example, the urban area, particularly susceptibility to flooding in the autumn. 
the cropland areas it's a, that uh, winter pose a significant threat to cropland area with 12% facing high to very high flood susceptibility. And for the machine learning community, X tributes and random forest model outperform the SVM, and which is common for imbalanced data set like the flood susceptibility and ensemble model demonstrate the strong performance across all the uh, seasonal classification. And so the data set is now open. Mm, so we can share with you. Mm, uh, and also uh, we share the code in, when the paper is uh, ready for publish. And but the, the data set is now open, you can ask by the email. Thank you.